I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today we're gonna to do an Inkscape tutorial. We'll make some watercolor map art. And here's some examples I've made in the past. This is one from the first tutorial we did for minimalistic map art. There was a comment that said, hey, you can try a different color scheme, so we did that. But today, I wanna to work on this number here. This is what you can learn. This will be a step-by-step -step follow along if you want, or just watch. First, we'll go to OpenStreetMap, which is a free resource, and it has map data for all over the world. And I'm gonna do Manchester by the sea, but you can do your hometown, your favorite place to visit, anywhere you want, because if you follow along the steps, we'll take that data, we can download it into an SVG file, which is a vector format that we can then manipulate in Inkscape. But I'll show you a quick and easy way how to clean that up, because when you get the file originally, it has all sorts of stuff on it, but we wanna make it nice and clean like this. And finally, I'll show you some settings that I use to do this watercolor effect pretty easily, and we'll put it all together. So let's begin. Let's head to openstreetmap.org. All right, here we are in OpenStreetMap. Now my default is Boston, yours might be something else. I'm gonna make this map for this tutorial on Manchester by the sea, which is a nice little coastal town up here. So I'm gonna type in my town up here, push go. That'll bring you to the location and this is a really pretty looking map already. They don't let you download this version. So first you have to go to uh, over here to layers and see how you have standard up here. Standard is the version that we can, act, it'll actually give us a vector format that we can download. So make sure you're on standard. Next we can go and zoom in to the part that we want. So for my map, I'm gonna go to share and then set custom dimensions, and that'll bring up your box that allows you, if you have these, these dots here, lets you move the box itself, and the corners let you uh, change the dimensions. So I wanna get a lot of water, because for this tutorial, it's supposed to be like a watercolor, and then a little bit of the parts of the town, like Singing Beach over here is nice, some of the downtown. Like the fun thing is, if you know the area, you'll know what parts of the map you're gonna want. This looks good to me. An important thing for format, the default is PNG. Make sure you're on SVG. That's the whole point that we're here. We're trying to get a vector file that we can then change and manipulate inside of Inkscape. Now scale, if you go one to one, that'll give you all the data inside your box and that's gonna be a ton of information. It's gonna slow down Inkscape. You're gonna crash all the time. So I recommend if your scale one to one is 12,000, like quadruple it or something, or even I'm gonna do I'm gonna do just sixty thousand. And don't worry about the math. It just means it's gonna it's not gonna collect quite as much data because I'm making a minimalist map. I just need the roads and the coastline. So once you have it the way you like it, click download, and then when I see it come down, I'm gonna take it from right here. So map eight, that's the download that I meant to take. I'll put it on my desktop. Before we go, I'm gonna give credit where credit is due. If you're gonna use this uh, for fun or for even a project, you gotta give credit to OpenStreetMap. This is all free and people like actually contributed data to make these um, available to us. So thank you, OpenStreetMap. Let's get out of here. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna move into some open space. We're back in Ink Inkscape and I'm gonna bring the map in. I'll show you first, just drag it back in. And for the settings, these are not the defaults. I'm gonna change my DPI for rendered SVG to 100 and rendering mode blocky. You'll see why in a second. I'll push OK. It's gonna think and it's gonna bring like a large portion of the Atlantic Ocean with it and a little tiny map. See, there we go. So here's some of the ocean. Let's go find it. Here's Manchester by the sea way up here. And now in previous tutorials, I used to immediately delete out the ocean, but in this case, I'm gonna clip out a portion of it so I can retain the coastline and we'll use that as the reference point for the watercolor. To do that, let's grab the Bezier pen tool right here and we'll draw into the ocean kind of as far as you want. Just make sure you have the coastline, the pieces that you need. And let's see, so I've got a red fill. Let's get the fill out of there. So you see the perimeter here. Now I'm gonna use this to clip it, but it, it will only work if we change this stroke to a path. So go to path, stroke to path, and then we're gonna be taking it out of the ocean, but the ocean itself sometimes is grouped with other stuff. And if you've ever had difficulty with these paths, like difference intersection, you can't clip a group, at least with these things. So I'm gonna click on the giant ocean here, and I know I have it because I'm on my fill blue, but for all we know, it's grouped with a bunch of stuff, maybe some of my text I had in the, in the opening. So I'll go to object ungroup. So I've got it ungrouped, now I can hold shift, click my perimeter, and now it should work. So I'll go to path, difference. And if it has a little white outline, then we know we did it. It's thinking, see when it's blue, it's still thinking. 
we did it. Okay, so we've got our outline, and you're, you're going to want to grab it and pull it out, but it's still grouped to this giant ocean. So to, to now break the whole thing apart, there's a function called break apart. So I've got it all grouped. I go to path again, break apart, and now it should have it in little pieces. So I'll deselect everything, click in the middle of nowhere, then click the giant ocean, and then send it away. And that, that's what we need. So that was it just it's a little steps you have to do to get this coastline. So watch, I'll click it again, control D duplicates it, and that's exactly what I need. All right, let's zoom in and let's clean this map up here. There's a really cool feature that Inkscape gives us. It's called edit select same. And you can choose either fill color, stroke color, or a combination. So for example, if I click on this triangle, like this little hill, I can tell it's a fill because the fill menu lights up the color. So I'll go to edit, select same. And if I click on fill color, these other triangles will, will be selected as well. So fill color, there they are, then just push delete, they all go. Another example, if I click on this green park thing, I know it's a fill color. So I go to edit, select same, fill color. It'll get the rest of those green things, then they're gone. So you can go ahead and do that. If you don't want to use that feature, you can also just hold shift and go around the word and then just get rid of the words that way. You don't have to delete them one at a time. You can go group them all together and then just push delete. What else should we get rid of? How about this street sign? SU, whatever that's from. And the next thing I want to show you is I don't like how the roads are all thick like that. So let's grab everything, let's zoom out. I'll grab all the map feature at least and I'm gonna just change it into one uniform weight, or at least make the weight smaller. So I'm gonna grab way out in no man's land, just about everything in there. And if you go to stroke, see it's gonna be percentage. It's like, we don't know what these stroke weights are, it's everything. So you can just change it from 100%, go down to maybe 25%. I push enter, it'll think for a second, and it'll bring all my different roads and things to like a nice neat, see, just did it. Like that looks way more interesting to me. So then I'll zoom in again, and from here, I'll see what else can I get rid of before I recolorize it to like one mono color. I don't like the train so much. So let me clean this up a tiny bit off camera, then we'll come back and we'll recolorize it and slap the watercolor effect on. Okay, we're back. I just took out the railroad and a couple of those like random parks and stuff. So the next step is I'm gonna take it off the map because I'm gonna recolor the roads. So it, it, it takes a little bit of faith at this point. So here we go, I'm gonna group all this stuff. Once it's grouped, I can move it. Okay, now I can say goodbye to this weird under layer here. And this water we're actually not gonna use anymore, so that can go. This part's all personal preference. I'm gonna turn the map into like a neutral muted color. So let's grab the whole thing again, make sure it's grouped, go to filters, color, simple blend. That'll bring up a menu, let me walk you through it. So you've got your blend mode, I'm on multiply, so I'll show you that one to start. Nothing's gonna happen until you push live preview then that'll render based on whatever color you have. So this is kind of like a gray, this is too cold for my liking. So the different choices for blend mode, let's just stick with normal, because I want a nice flat, even color. And it's still a little too cold. Let's go into the warmer colors, like something over here. And then to see it, I'll un unclick live preview. Then when I re-click it, it'll render. Right there looks pretty good. So when you find something that you like, just push apply and then close and you've got your map data. So let's put it back on some landmass. The reason we needed our coastline here is because we deleted it when we recolored our map and we have to rebuild it again. So let's grab the rectangle tool and draw yourself a rectangle, make it pretty neutral color just for the landmass there. All right, so it's going on top of the water. To change the hierarchy, go to the select feature, Make sure you've got the right object. And then these like book things, just go down one step. From there, just make sure you have it where you want it. All right, before I clip it out, I'm going to duplicate the water again. I'm gonna use that one more time. So let's select the top, shift, select the bottom, go to path, difference. And there you go, there's your <laughs> there's your landmass back with the perfect coastline. We're gonna come back in the end with that for the water. Now I learned this has a lot of data, a lot of nodes, so it's hard to move it around and like freeze up Inkscape, but you can move this around pretty freely. So first, let's make sure it goes underneath. So a hierarchy, down one step. And it, if I'm not mistaken, it should clip back in. I know that this is a beach, that beach goes there, but let's see if it clips back in, if it remembers itself. And it did, okay, <laughs> it worked out perfect. So we've come to the main event, adding the watercolor to start 
we need to put a white base underneath this part because the watercolor effect has transparency involved. And if you're gonna use this or print it out, it'll be a lot easier if there's some base to it. So let's just draw a rectangle. It's gray, we'll change it to pure white. And I don't see my hierarchy, so do selector, down one, down two. There we go. First trick I wanna show you with the watercolor is it works better if you have a smaller object. So let's bring this way down. You'll see why in a second. Go to filters, texture, watercolor. And yeah, look at that. So we'll zoom in. So that looks, that's pretty realistic for an Inkscape just doing some math to create all this. Now you can change the color as you please. Maybe we'll go darker, maybe a little bit richer there. And there's a couple ways you can manipulate it. First, I'll show you how to get it to look like this. If you're in a small enough object, opacity, I do want it full, but blur is creating some of the effect. If I take all the blur away, it goes back to your starting objects, pretty cool. So then you can choose how much blur you want. Now I wanna have a very cool layered like bleeding bottom. So I'll go right about there. And there's other ways you can affect it too. You can go to edit paths by node. If you have a less complicated object, it's more fun to play with. In this case, let's just leave it the way it is. Let me show you the settings though, if it's not looking like this. So go to filter, filter editor and mine's gonna come up here. So I'll walk you through it. The Gaussian blur, right now it's, a, it's at 11. If you move it, there's a, it'll change the intensity. Right there looks good. Turbulence, you've got your base frequency. And if you go too high, it just looks like, it's like junk. So let's keep it real low. Right there is good. Octaves, I'm on a five. If it's too low, the effect gets kind of cheesy. So you can kind of take it where you wanna go. Maybe we go to an eight, seven, seven's fine. And then see, that's just the randomness that the computer is using to start it, so don't play with that. I don't worry about any of these other ones, composite over color matrix, I never touch. Displacement map, that's kind of cool sometimes. Just moves the inside of your watercolor. If you really, if you really want to get detailed, you can play with that. Composite, no, 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 no. Blend has to be multiply. All right, so there you go. So there's the settings. Let's X out of this and put it into place. You may notice I tweaked the color a tiny bit and there's one more thing I wanna mention. If I just drag this the way it is, it's gonna change the look of my watercolor, but this is the way I want it. So if I drag it, it just morphs. Control Z takes it back. The only way that I know to, to lock it in is to resize it and for some reason then it kind of like stays. So I'm gonna resize this in proportion. I'll do Control Shift and then I'll bring it way up. Then if you click off, then click back, click back on, it stays. So just keep that in mind. If, if you don't care how it looks, just move it. But this is, I wanted this bottom to look like that. All right, let's put this all into place. Sliding it in, look at that, right underneath. You can put it where you want it. I think that looks good there. And then I just brought this. I'm gonna grab into no man's land, hold shift because I have to collect everything, including that white under background there. Who knows what this thing is? Control G groups everything, and we can end by clipping the final projects. So here is a clipping box. Doesn't matter the color. I will reduce the opacity so I can see through it. There we go. So with the clipping box selected, hold shift, grab everything else, go to object, clip, set. And there we have it. There's Manchester by the sea, minimalist map art with the watercolor effect. And I didn't center the words, but that's all right. Nobody's perfect. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any ideas of future tutorials you'd like to see, drop a comment below and thanks for watching. Thank you.